Yesterday on Democracy Now!, Dr. Stein announced that she's formally running for President of the United States, seeking the nomination of the Green Party, the only national party that does not accept corporate donations. That is the only way that we're going to win this fight that we need to win. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jill Stein. so very much. Thank you to Marsha and Margaret and Medea for those wonderful introductions. I'm so honored and humbled and thank you Dennis for putting this together. Thank you Dennis and to Joel Peisig for that beautiful uh, video for the, move, for the um, campaign. I am so honored and humbled by all of us, by all of you uh, that are here today and for all that each of you are doing that has brought us to this historic moment when the movement for democracy and justice is sweeping the planet. And thanks to so many in this room who are leading the charge, to Sherry Honkala for lifting up the voices of the poor to lead the fight for economic justice, to Herman Perotti for defending the rights of students and immigrants and the disabled, to Bonnie Lane, for mobilizing the homeless as part of her mayoral campaign to become a new political force in Baltimore. This work for democracy and justice is the antidote to the converging crises we face that Martin Luther King described as racism, militarism, and extreme materialism, now made even worse by the climate crisis. Communities across the globe are rising up against these disasters, from Ferguson to Gaza, from Baltimore to Cairo, from Detroit to Pine Ridge. This struggle for justice is especially wrenching today in the aftermath of the latest act of racist terrorism in Charleston, South Carolina, where nine magnificent lives were taken from their families, their communities, and from all of us. This tragedy is a painful reminder that our nation's roots in the criminal institution of slavery go deep, and that legacy carries forward from slave trade to lynchings, to Jim Crow, to drug wars, mass incarceration, police violence, the school to prison pipeline, and unconscionable racial disparities in health and wealth and education. We must see the continuity between the covert violence of institutional racism and the flagrant violence of white supremacy. And it, must, and it must all be stopped. In the face of this horror, the courage, the forgiveness, and the love shown by the family's victims is utterly astounding and is a model to us of the transforming power of human spirit. And let their example be a living inspiration to the broader movement for democracy and justice as we work together to put an end to the scourge of racism and white supremacy in all of its forms. I became involved in this movement for democracy and justice 35 years ago as a new doctor and a mother starting off in medical practice I saw clearly even then that our healthcare system was desperately failing, especially for the poor. And I was deeply troubled by the new epidemic suddenly appearing in our children, the rising tide of obesity and asthma and autism and much more. And I joined community groups to eliminate the upstream drivers of these diseases that don't need to exist. Everything from pollution to poverty, to industrial food, street violence, homelessness, and more. After years of trying to educate our elected officials, I realized that our healthcare system was actually part of a much larger failure of our entire political establishment that's not only failing us, it's outright exploiting us as it serves the economic elite funding their political campaigns and the two big corporate political parties. 
That's when I realized that as a doctor, I could best contribute to the health of society by practicing not clinical medicine, but political medicine, <laughs> confronting the mother of all illnesses, our sick political system that must be fixed if we're to have any hope of fixing all these other cases. Now, decades later, my practice of political medicine has taken me across the country to the front lines of struggle, like the picket lines at the oil refineries in Houston, the trial of Benton Harbor political prisoner, Reverend Edward Pinckney, resisting the takeover of his city by the Whirlpool Corporation, the immigrant struggles on the Rio Grande, the DC Mother's Day March to the US Department of Justice where mothers from across the country who'd lost their sons to police violence came together. These courageous souls, like so many of us in this room, are realizing that dreaming for change is not enough. Hoping for change is getting nowhere. And we are using the power in our own hands to defend our communities, our children, and our future. We do this not because we want to. We do it because we have to. And because our political representatives from both parties have sold out the people and the planet to the highest bidder. As a result, we face a crisis of historic proportions. One in two American families are now in or near poverty. 20, 20 million people need full-time work, yet 75% of the jobs being created now are part-time, temporary, and poor. 40 million students are in debt with little prospect of getting out. Meanwhile, corporate profits have tripled and a mere 80 billionaires have the wealth equivalent to half of the world's population of 3.5 billion. This is unacceptable. The ecological crisis is beyond an emergency. 2014 was the hottest year yet. California, which produces half the fruit and vegetables supply for our country, has one year of water left in its reservoirs. Where the climate is heading can be seen in India, which has just had one of the worst heat waves in recorded history with a heat and humidity impact equivalent to 149 degrees Fahrenheit, causing roads to melt and killing nearly 2,000 people. As a consequence, half the world's species are expected to die off by 2100 as part of this climate stress that's causing the sixth uh, great extinction. And this enormous die-off that's expected by 2100 clearly puts the survival of we and our children at great risk come the next century and before. Bottom line, we're in trouble. And the political parties that got us into this mess are not just unwilling, they are utterly incapable of getting us out. We need the people-powered political movement that does not sell out to the corporate predators and the economic elite or their apologists in the Democratic and Republican parties. And that's why I'm here today to launch my campaign for President of the United States. I'm running because this nation is in crisis and we, the people, have the power to fix it. To paraphrase Alice Walker, the biggest way people give up power is by not knowing we have it to start with. Well, we do have the power and it's time to use it. In poll after poll, the American people are calling for the kinds of solutions that we're offering. Polls also show that people are leaving the two corporate parties by the droves with a full 58% calling for a third party. Young people especially are leaving the Democratic and Republican parties. If the 40 million young people who are swamped by debt got word that they could go out to the polls and vote for our campaign 
and for the Green Party to put an end to student debt and make college free, those 40 million votes alone are enough to decide the election and change American politics forever. <laughs> the American people have had enough of a two-party system that bails out Wall Street and throws out Main Street. We've all had enough of the 1% with their cult of cutthroat competition and their religion of greed. It's now clear for all to see where those oppressive systems have led us to extreme inequality, economic despair, racism, endless war, and climate catastrophe. But the American people have the power to create a new way forward, and the solutions we need are in our hands right now. Our Power to the People plan lays out these solutions in a blueprint. To move our economy from greed and exploitation of corporate capitalism to a human-centered economy that puts people, planet, and peace over profit. This plan would end unemployment and poverty. It would avert climate catastrophe. It would build a sustainable, just economy. And it would recognize the dignity and human rights of everyone in our society. This plan affirms that we have the power to take our future back. We have the power to create a Green New Deal and provide millions of jobs by transitioning to 100% clean renewable energy by 2030. Yes. We have the power to provide living wage jobs and workers' rights for every American. We have the power to end poverty and guarantee economic human rights. We have the power to make health care a human right through an improved Medicare for all system. We have the power to abolish student debt and provide education for all as a right. We have the power to create a just economy and the power to protect Mother Earth. We have the power to end institutional racism, police brutality, and mass incarceration, and the power to restore our constitutional rights. We have the power to end our wars of aggression, to close the foreign military bases, and cut military expenditures by 50%. We have the power to empower the people. So I invite you to join our campaign and make the most of this moment of historic transformation. We and the Green Party will be in this race all the way to November 2016 and beyond. We will amplify the voices of courage and transformation across America that are already leading the way. Our campaign is building a people-powered force that will not sell out, and we will not bow out, and we will change American politics forever. Visit jill2016.com, connect with us, volunteer, make a donation. This democracy needs more than your voice. It needs the power in your hands to reject lesser evil, and to rise up for greater good. Yes. Now is the time to seize this moment of crisis together and create the world of democracy, justice, and peace that we all deserve. The power to create this world is not in our hopes. It's not in our dreams. It's right here, right now. It's in our hands. Yeah. Thank you.